Hello YouTube, uh, my name is Dan Miller. It's the first time ever shooting uh, any vlog or anything like that. I've always wanted to do it. I'm certainly a fan of all your channels. Uh, there's some great YouTubers out there, very enthusiastic, and I've had a lot of fun and, and uh, watching you guys, and I've always wanted to get in on it. Um, tell you a little bit about myself. I've been a chef for the past 28 years. I'm a classically trained chef from the Culinary Institute of America in Hyde Park. I um, also did some extended programs at Napa Valley. Um, we've had some wonderful experience as a chef being a, um, a executive chef for the Hilton, um, which was a lot of fun. A banquet chef for the Fountain Blue Hilton in Miami. Um, I've also worked for very large casinos like the El San Juan Hotel and Casino in Puerto Rico and different restaurants including my own farm the table restaurant uh, barbecue restaurant uh, that we have and uh, or should say had um, and now our barbecue catering business which is called Miller Smokehouse and Catering we have a wonderful family extended family uh, we've got two boys and a beautiful wife and uh, life is good and I'm just sharing my day with you out in our new patio here uh, we've got a new smoker out in our deck uh, new cooker I should say and that's the big green egg it's sitting right back here that's a phenomenal tool and I'll, I'll kind of get to the reason why I chose that tool uh, of that cooker and uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun I hope you hang in there we can talk a little bit about a little bit about uh, some of the other cookers that I have or had smoked on some I bought some I made, some I sold. Um, our first smoker is a Lang smoker. It's a phenomenal smoker. 86 Lang puts out a great product. Can't go wrong. Simple, wonderful tool. Anyone starting out, use it. Great. I moved on to a Southern Pride unit. I really didn't like it. I liked the convenience. I didn't like the taste of propane. I didn't like the way the woods combusted in that chamber for the final product. The final product was subpar. It was okay, it wasn't the best. I moved on, I wanted to buy a new rig. I thought, what the heck, uh, why not uh, build my own? So I started working in a fabrication shop. Got to learn a lot about welding, stick welding, MIG welding, uh, you know, TIG welding, um, how these different metals work together, how they don't. I learned a lot about grinding. <laughs> and I learned a lot about smokers and uh, our second our next smoker after that was the Shirley Fabrication clone it was one of the largest uh, smokers they had built on their YouTube site I think it was called the Holy Smoker or something like that it was ginormous and it was a big undertaking but we built two of those um, still got one of those but we sold one um, and then that smoker is almost too big, even too big almost for my Dodge Ram. Um, so we decided to make a smaller unit, knowing the focusing in on our weddings and our most profitable time of the year. So I wanted to get a smaller unit, so I started looking into gravity-fed systems, and that's where I came across stumps. And I liked it so much, and the stubborn person that I am, I built it. So we built a stump stretch smoker, holds about 4,500 pounds, or four to 500 pounds, uh, fully loaded. It kind of struggles a little bit, so I like to stay into that like 300, 350 range. And the way the stump smoker works is our gravity fed smoker. It's a large container with a separate container built in it, a chute that holds charcoal, a firebox on the bottom that has the introduction of air, charcoal burns, add in wood chunks, whether it be hickory, cherry, which I love, plum, which is my second favorite, all kinds of different flavor profiles you can play with in different types of meat. Um, me and the wife, we like to entertain, uh, so I decided to retire one of my older Commando Kamado style grills that have really been just collecting dust anyways and get a new pit and that pit is our big green egg which you see behind me and that pit is uh, is also a learning experience and I thought hey why not bring this learning experience 
in my 30 years of cooking experience and my millions of pounds of barbecue meat that we've served over the years pass that along to you and hopefully you guys can gain something out of this and some confidence and learn a little bit more about in depth from a chef's perspective of the end result I know what I'm gonna get right into the first two hours of my product I either gotta change it make the quick decisions and I know the end product I know it and I want to share those experiences with you and show you what this big green egg can do originally when I first fired it up we did some chicken and ribs and and everything like that and I noticed the pros and cons um, these these units are uh, too insulated for their own good uh, they don't have that same combustion factor that a stick burner does that gives you that nice smoke ring the smoke flavor and profile is still there the low and slow is still there but the combustion needs some work and together we're going to learn that I'm going to pass it along to you we're going to get some great results and have a lot of fun uh, thank you for letting me introduce myself uh, I'm going to have a lot of fun here uh, we're going to put some briskets and pork butts on tonight early in the morning we're going to throw some chicken on for tomorrow um, and we're going to we're going to take one of those briskets and put it on the green egg and see how it compares to putting it on the stumps and we could talk about that probably won't get an opportunity to cut into that brisket but i know what that brisket's going to look like in the end anyways but we'll, we definitely well maybe we'll cut into one of them I'll give you an idea of what that brisket looks like and we'll talk about it and talk about the combustion and the fuel and how we achieved the temperatures that we did because so I believe that there's one problem with the big green egg and that's this mentality of a set it and forget it type of thing now I thought that I would get that kind of with the stump smoker too but I noticed a little bit more effort and involvement in that stumps cooker. I was getting the same great flavors and textures that I did on my old lane. And I want to pass that along to you. We're going to talk about where we're going to put that fuel. How much of that fuel we're going to put in. Uh, where we're going to put those wood chunks. If we're going to put a drip pan in there. How we're going to butcher the meat. How we're going to season it. And I'm going to take all of your questions I'm going to answer them as much as I can We've got some busy weeks ahead of us but uh, hopefully you guys get something from this I'll see you at the pit in a little bit